let me share with you the story of Carmen. 20 years ago, I was in Peru working as a gynecologic oncologist and expert on women's cancer. And Carmen was a 37 years old woman, like the woman in the picture. She had three kids, two girls, five and seven years old, and one son, an 11 year old son. Carmen was married, but she was abandoned by her husband the day she was diagnosed with cervical cancer. And that's not uncommon. I've seen many women being abandoned by their husband when they have a diagnosis of cancer. Carmen was left alone with her kids and her diagnosis. She completed treatment, she received radiotherapy, but the treatment didn't work. And that was the time I met Carmen, because I needed to sit with her and explain to her that the treatment didn't work. And I needed to explain to her that she was about to die. And what's her response to the news that really touched me very deeply? Because she was not afraid to die at all. But she was very afraid about the future of her kids. She was asking me for time because she needed time, enough time to find somebody to take care of the kids. A couple of weeks later, she came back. She was happy because she found some relative to take care of one of the girls. A few weeks later, he came again, and she again happy because she found somebody else to take care of the other girl. Even though they were separated, at least they had somebody to, to, to live with. Weeks later, she came back, and she was very deteriorated. But her physical pain was nothing compared to the emotional suffering she was having because she couldn't find anybody to take care of the son. That was the last time I saw Carmen. And that's the real phase of cervical cancer. And we have a big problem because we still have around 300,000 women dying of cervical cancer every year. Almost 300,000 Carmens dying of cervical cancer every single year. Just today, or any day, are gonna be 800 women dying of cervical cancer and most of them in developing countries. We have a big problem. But now we have solutions. We are in a very different situation now because we have a better understanding of the disease. We have a much better understanding that there is a virus related to this disease, the human papilloma virus or HPV. And because this better understanding of the disease of the precancer and cancer, we are able to detect women and treat them with simple technologies that they are available now. We have the HPV vaccine that probably you know. Now it's possible to provide protection to girls against most of the cases of cervical cancer, like this girl in Uganda. But this vaccine doesn't protect women who are already sexually active. There are millions of women that need to be screened. And we also have technology for that. Now we have new tests that are simpler, cheaper, and easier to run to detect the virus. If we know what women are infected with the virus, we can evaluate them and we can treat them and we can avoid the cancer. This picture is just amazing. That was a dream years ago. You can see an indigenous lab technician in one province in Guatemala, basic lab, running this technology. The most important part of this technology is that can be done with a sample self-collected by women. No gynecological uh, evaluation, no pelvic evaluation. Women can collect the sample by themselves and the results are much better than pap smear. We have the solutions, but we need action. And we all can be part of that action. If you are an educator, you can share this with your students and parents. If you are a policy maker, think about these new strategies at the time you plan your programs. If you are a donor, 
think that investing in cervical cancer, you can have a huge impact in the life of many women. We need action, and that's why some time ago, PATH and other organizations got together in this new coalition called Cervical Cancer Action to join efforts to eradicate this disease. Now it's possible to, to, to do that. It's possible to eradicate cervical cancer. I want to finish my presentation going back to Carmen. Please remember that there are still 300,000 women dying of cervical cancer, 300,000 Carmen's dying of cervical cancer every year. But also remember that we have the tools now that we can make a huge difference, that we can eradicate this disease. And more importantly, when you leave the room, remember Carmen, but also remember that it's time to, for action and we all can be part of this action. Join the movement, join us in this effort to eradicate cervical cancer. Thank you.